Hello and welcome. My name is Adam Clark, and uh, this is part of my game school videos. Um, today we're going to be looking at a stencil. Uh, this was a kind of game making uh, bit of software to make uh, 2D games. And uh, what I'm going to do, I've I already did one video, and that's 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 done okay, and uh, and pe people quite enjoyed it, and I got lots of feedback, and I'm going to take some of that feedback on board. Now stencil has been. Uh, has been updated and it, it used to be stencil works now it's just stencil and what I want to do is I want to start from scratch uh, the, this uh, a set of courses not only for myself but also I, I'm going to be running uh, some workshops with other people in and around the UK and I want these videos to be um, uh, like little assistants where people can uh, dip into them and kind of follow me along while we kind of learn a little bit about stencil so what we're going to do with this um, with this video today is we're going to look at the it's stencil's own crash course, and you're going to kind of walk with me as I go through uh, the crash course, and we're going to kind of figure things out together. Okay, so let's just dive straight in. The first thing you're going to see when you start up stencil is uh, this window, uh, and it's the kind of the welcome center, and there's uh, there's lots of examples um, of different games you can play. The one that I'm interested in is uh, we're going to we're going to go down here. We're going to say, "Is this your first time?" Run through the crash course, and you click Start Crash Course. So I've already clicked it, and it opens up a website window here. The website window has the crash course. It says, "Let's make a game." So let's let's get let's dive straight in and get started. So it says, "Welcome to Stencil. This short hands-on tutorial will walk you through the steps needed to create a simple platformer. Specifically, we'll show you how to create a new game, locate game resources." customize actors, create a scene and test your game. Without further ado, let's get started. It says screenshots may differ slightly from the current version of, of Stencil. If something is way off, let us know in the comments. Uh, it's, it's, been, it's been updated recently, so uh, it's pretty good. It also says, uh, note this crash course makes use of the crash course kit, with, which ships with Stencil by default. If it's missing or deleted, you can download it here. Now, when I first did this, you had to download each of these little bits through Stencil Forge, and I'm so, sure we'll get to Stencil Forge later on. Uh, but this, uh, it's already a lot of it's already here, so it makes this this bit a lot simpler. So this is great cracking. Uh, so we've talked about that. When you first load up Stencil, you see the screen looks like something like this. This is the Welcome Center, and from here you can create a new game or open an existing game or browse games that other people have created. Create a new game. Click the dotted square labeled click here to create a new game. Cool. So we'll click there. And um, it says the crash course kit. So we're going to click on that one. You can select other other things, but we're going to click on that one and press next. And we're going to look, um, what should we call this? Uh, test. <laughs> test one. And press create. Um, it says down here what are kits. Oftentimes, when you create a game in Stencil, you want to start off with a kit, a game template that comes with sample resources and has things like settings and game logic already configured. The kit you're starting with has all the resources you'll need for the crash course. Okay, so now you'll be taken to the dashboard, a central area where you can see the game's resources, graphics, sounds, and game logic and settings. So here we are. So over here, we've got actor types, backgrounds. Um, no backgrounds in there, fonts, scenes, sounds, and tile sets. So we've we've done page one already, that was quick. So let's click and continue to part two. Part two, game resources. From the dashboard, we can now create new resources or import existing ones. For the crash course, we've included the resources you'll need to get started. Let's go over them. So the first one is a player actor. We'll start by locating the actor that will serve as our playable character. So we'll pop it up here. And actor types are here, and we get two different actors there. Let's just pause a little bit and look at the definition. In stencil, anything that can move or be interacted with is considered an actor. This includes playable characters, enemies, user interface elements, etc. An actor type is a template for actors. An actor type is a template for actors. What actors usually mean means a particular instance. Sometimes we use the two interchangeably to keep our language simple. Hmm. So it says first click on the actor types, which I've already done there in the dashboard on the left hand sidebar. And it says you'll see a small number two next to the button, and that number indicates the total number of actors in your game. 
Similarly, the numbers next to your resources indicate the number of other types of resources we have. And what that means is like for the sounds, we've got two, two sounds in there and tile sets. There's just one tile set and then behaviors, it lists the amount of behaviors. So it's a nice quick way of kind of just seeing what, how much resources we've got uh, and, where, thing, and uh, where, where and how things might be. Um, so let's keep going. Now the actor type listings will appear. As expected, you'll see two actor types here, one called Mambo and the other called Pronga. Mambo is going to be our player actor. If you double click on the Mambo icon, Stents will open inside the actor editor. So let's double click it. And there we get our actor editor. Um, and we can kind of go back. It's actually opened up a new tab. So you can quickly whiz through the tabs up here. And in this, we've got appearance, behaviors, events, collision, physics, and this collision. You can see a little collision box all around them already. Uh, physics, right, kind of uh, some little radio buttons there, and properties. So let's, um, let's not worry too much about them just yet. Uh, another definition, the actor editor is one of several resource, resource editors inside Stencil. It allows you to completely customize an actor's appearance, behavior, and physical properties. And it says we'll come back to this editor soon, but for now, let's check out the rest of the resources we'll be using the second actor. Flip back over to the dashboard by clicking on its tab. Uh, now open up Pronga. So double click on that. And we see that it's opened up another tab for us as well. It says tip. Uh, prefer to open things using the keyboard, type Control O or Command O on a Mac and this will bring up a dialog which you can use the name for any resources. Uh, which looks something like this I think. Uh, so it looks like that. And we can type in Prong and there we go. We don't have to have to type it. It's just uh, it looks fun there. Um, tile sets. So we're going to back onto this. Now looks at tile sets. A tile set is a collection of rectangular tiles that can be used to build game levels, known as scenes in stencil speak. Let's click back. Click back to the dashboard tab, and then click on the tile sets category. Okay, there we go. Open up the grassland tile set by double clicking it, I think. Double click. There we go. Let's roll, scroll down here. As you expect, uh, an editor pops up in the new tab, and this time, there it is. And this time it's the tile set editor. We'll return to this soon after opening up, opening up a couple more things. Sounds. Let's look at our sounds. Next, click on the sounds button in the dashboard, and you'll see two sounds that are already there, stomp and jump. So let's go to dashboard, sounds, stomp and jump, and we'll open up jump. And there it is, so if we stop it, stop, okay. Let's whoosh down. Last but not least, let's look at behaviors. Shown below are the behaviors we'll be using in the crash course. It says down in note, Behaviors control all game logic and player interaction, and they're what makes every game tick. Let's just take a quick peek inside one of these behaviors. Double click on walking to open it up inside the behavior editor. So let's have a look at this. Um, behaviors, so there's logic, actor behaviors. Right, so it says up here, double click walking. So we're looking for walking, double click it. And there it is. Now, I don't know if anybody's used um, Scratch before. MIT Scratch is very similar to Scratch. Um, and um, I'm going to be doing a whole series of um, tutorials about Scratch 2. And, and hopefully you'll be able to see just a link below uh, to see my Scratch uh, introduction to Scratch and how Scratch works. So if you're a bit unsure about this kind of stuff, go and check out my Scratch videos. Uh, and we'll do, we're going to do their first tutorial and walk through with Scratch. So over here it says let's just take a quick peek inside one of these behaviors. Double click on walking to open up inside the behavior editor which I've done. And it says there's a lot going on in here and we'll talk about it further later on. The behavior editor is a powerful tool that makes designing complex logic quite straightforward. And we will have a whole tutorial dedicated to helping you learn the workings of this editor. Though for now just know that it exists. 
and it says prefer coding instead. We offer two ways to add code to your games: a dedicated code editor or hooks to use your favorite text or hooks to use your favorite text editor, and a special code blocks that you let you insert code into the behavior editor. And that looks like this. So there's these three tabs appear. We we can actually preview the raw code um, if you like, and edit there. Or, or have a look at edit properties. All right, okay, there's a little image. But you can actually attach your own image icon to these uh, to these behaviors or not, I suppose. So all this actually boils down to a, a kind of visual representation of what the code looks like here. Uh, and we'll go through that kind of, we'll have a look at that tutorial too. Last but not least, here goes saving. When you're working on a game, it's a good idea to save frequently. Just hit the save game button in the main toolbar to do so, or type in control S or command S on a Mac. Well, let's just save game. Okay, so now we're going on to part three.